dudes and dudettes. Hope you're finding these block shear calculations like totally sick. Well, in this uh, couple videos for this lesson, we're gonna take a look at block shear as it applies in the real world first in problem one. So we're gonna draw a bunch of different possible blocks for failure checks for our block shear calcs. And then in problem two, we're gonna go ahead and solve for the design strength for a typical connection. Now let's get to drawing some possible failure blocks for the block shear limit state on real world members. I suggest you go ahead and give these four connections a try on your own and then come back to this video if you have questions or if you wanna check your answers. So in this first one, we have a typical brace member. This is an ad angle member. It looks like it's a double angle member. If you look closely, there's another uh, one on the far, uh, on the back side. And we expect that the shear failure plane will run through the bolt holes. So something like this that I've sketched in here in cyan. All right, so now we have two options. It can either go the way that I've just drawn it, or it could go the other way. Now, if it goes the other way, it has to fracture basically through the entire outstanding leg. And so that's not really uh, likely because if it was to fracture through the entire outstanding leg, then uh, that would be a pretty large net tension area to include as compared to the net tension area on this block that I've drawn. All right, so the instructions asked us to identify the different member shapes and then to sketch their possible block uh, shear failures. So here we go. Uh, so we see that we have a double angle member and I've sketched a double angle, uh, the connection that's drawn there. And this failure block is where we would expect the block shear uh, limit state to control. Again, we're looking to just make sure we're on board with what is failing and which mode of failure, because remember block shear is a combination of shear and tension failures. So this surface here in red is the tension face, uh, or the net tension area, and then this area in green is the net shear area. And then of course in block shear, we also have the limit state of shear yielding so shear yielding would be along that green surface, um, except without the reduction for the bolt holes. Whenever we check tension members, we need to not forget to check their associated connection plates too. So when we're asked to kind of check the design capacity of this connection, we want to check the design capacity of both the double angles and the gusset plate. So here I'm just sketching in the double angle. And just if you want to put some numbers to it, maybe this is a four by four by a half, I'm just guessing here. Um, but uh, anyhow, uh, it's not too critical in this case. You would be able to, in the field, actually measure this angle, or maybe if you had the design plans, you would know what this member was. Now I want to look at the gusset plate, and I'm going to draw a simplified version of the gusset plate. As you can see, the gusset plate is kind of at an angle, so it's kind of a, a, a different scenario here. However, the block shear... Uh, limit state should remain the same. Uh, if we look at block shear, again, we're going to expect shearing failure through the bolt holes in this case. It only has the two bolts. Then we'll also expect a net tension fracture. Now, the tension fracture could go either to the top or bottom of the plate, but assuming that these bolt holes are in the middle, it could go either way, so we'll just sketch one of those directions here, so we'll sketch in the net tension area uh, going to one side, the shear area ripping through the bolts, and then we have our failure block. So this example is not strictly a tension member as much as it is just a check for block shear. Um, this beam would be loaded transversely uh, by you know gravity loads in the structure, and uh, it would try to be ripping away from the connection. And I've gone ahead and sketched the path of failure there. We would expect shearing through all the bolts, and then we would expect a ripping out, and this is where the net tension fracture would occur on um, the bottom there, out to the, the edge of 
the beam. So again, if you go back and you check the uh, chapter J, we see that this is one of the connections in which uh, we definitely want to check block shear in this connection. Um, in our uh, undergraduate steel design class, we'll probably focus more on the tension members, um, but I just want to make sure we're aware that we need to check block shear for these uh, bolted beam to column connections. I've gone ahead and drawn a free by diagram. I've drawn some arrows in there, so you can see uh, that you'd want to include the entire area because it, this is now a good free body diagram. Uh, this piece that I've drawn here is separated from the rest of the beam, and you can see that on this free body diagram I have the entire load. So all, uh, it looks like seven of those bolt holes would be resisting the um, you know, shear in the beam at that location, and so uh, we would have some shearing failure through those bolt holes as well as tension along the area shaded in red. And again, I'd want to use the entire section because that has the most load. If I go to a smaller one, um, I would have to uh, consider failure against some lower piece of view. All right, in part three, we have a lateral brace. I actually took this picture when I was at the Steel Conference uh, in 2019 in St. Louis. So I thought this was a fun connection and uh, a, you know, a real world connection where block shear uh, could play a role. Uh, the first thing I need you to do is to draw some free body diagrams of this, and we're gonna need multiple of them. I think in the end, I'm gonna have five. So go ahead and get those free body diagrams drawn. So let's look at block number one of our possible failure blocks. I'm going to consider shear ripping, and usually you want to try to do shear along one of the edges of the bolt, like one of the edge bolt rows. Then I'm going to say it's going to cut straight across and back. So this is going to be like the middle of the plate ripping out. And here, let me uh, give the highlighter function a try, uh, and so maybe this will give you a better idea. This is the failure block that we would expect in this particular case. Next, we'll look at block two. Again, I would consider some sort of failure, and then this time I'm going to do kind of the staggered pattern, right? So we see that there's a possibility that this uh, connection could fail along this diagonal. And so I definitely want to consider that as part of one of my design scenarios. Um, and I'll see, you know, basically I'll compare the net sections, uh, the net section areas in tension from block number one to this block number two here in red, and I would be able to tell which block is most likely to control. On to the third block, I need to keep considering blocks. I'm gonna try considering one like this. So a lot of this is just kind of practice, and then you have to you know, draw them, do the calculations, and then as you get practice with them, you'll know more or less you know, which ones are likely to be the ones that will fail um, and which ones aren't likely to control. And as you do more of this in design in your career, you'll have a better feel for you know what blocks you need to check for this limit state. Like the green one compared to the blue one where the green one kind of rips out the edge of the plate, um, I probably want to consider the same for the case there in red. What if I have that kind of you know back and forth pattern across the front and then it rips out the side. So I'm going to sketch another block. This will be now block uh, number four. Uh, magenta here, it'll do kind of that path and then it'll rip out the side. And we'll have failure or something of this nature. 
Finally, I'll add one more block. Um, we don't want to just consider the blocks that have the full value of P sub U on them, but uh, because we have more bolts kind of towards the back edge of the connection, I would say I want to maybe check what if those, you know, nine bolts in the back there are controlling. Um, so what if a fracture through something like this is uh, maybe the controlling value? And I mean, if this was potentially controlling as compared to uh, the case there in blue above, so I mean, if this new blue section was you know, a, wor uh, a more worst case scenario compared to block number one, then maybe I would want to keep trying new blocks and I would go on to try a block like uh, in block number five, but one that rips out the edge. So I cover all my bases. But I mean, you would do the calculations and you would see is block number five even going to control relative to block number one. Finally, please do not forget the gusset plate connection or that connection plate. So the tubes have a knife plate in them that then connects to a plate that's been welded to the you know, intersecting tube along this diagonal brace. Blocks on the gusset plate will be very similar to the blocks we just considered for the tube. Finally, we have this lovely W shape connection from a truss out in Llano, Texas. Um, so a nice picture here. You got a W shape framing into a gusset plate and the gusset plate is connecting to both flanges of that W shape. So hopefully you're able to see the tension member as it's attached to this gusset plate. Now this one has a lot of bolt holes. Um, it's not really important that we get the exact number correct as much as it is that we understand uh, what are the possible failure blocks. So I've gone ahead and I sketched a free body diagram. It's got, I can see seven bolt holes in a row. Um, there might be one hiding there behind the plate there that I, I can't really see. But uh, again, it's not too important. Uh, with the W shape, we're going to expect again a shear failure. And I've drawn this uh, in red in this particular figure as it's shearing along the bolt holes. And then we have to consider a couple scenarios. One is that the net tension failure would go across the W shape. Um, this is, you know, what we're used to, but we can't forget that the W beam has a web. And if we're going to get failure across that green surface, basically we're saying that uh, the entire web would need to fracture. And when we do our calculations for A uh, and T, the net tension area, we would have to include the entire area of the web. And so this is not likely because we get a lot of capacity in our block shear calculations from the net tension area. And because the web is going to be pretty uh, a decent amount of area, this is not the likely block to consider. So uh, we're going to take this out of consideration. Uh, what is more likely to happen is that it'll rip out the edges, but it'll do it on both sides. So I've gone ahead and drawn that uh, out. And so you would have to check the block shear capacity. And remember, you would need to do it for both sides of the flange. But again, I, what I've just sketched uh, and shaded in in this particular problem, this is just the top flange. And so if we're going to have full failure of the member, we also have pretty much, you know, we can assume the same connection on the bottom flange. So basically you'll have to come up with the capacity of one of these red shaded areas and multiply it by four to get the total capacity in block shear for the W shape. And I'll just go ahead and make sure that we have a note to include the in their capacity both the bottom flange and the top flange when we're considering block shear.
Last but not least, we do not forget to check our connection plates or our gusset plates. So let's go ahead and sketch roughly what that looks like in this particular problem. So here I've done a better job of sketching the angled nature of the plate. Um, but again, we're going to have uh, bolt hole lines and we're going to have to pick the most likely failure block. A lot of times for gusset plates, the most likely failure block because we have kind of that extra area fanning out to the sides. A lot of times the block shear that controls is the inside piece for the gusset plate. All right, so I hope you found this video useful in coming up with different block shears. Again, it takes a lot of practice to identify the critical blocks, um, but I know that as you do this more and more, uh, you'll get the hang of it and hopefully become an expert. So uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at doing an example of calculating the block shear capacity for a particular connection.